Geomantic Life, exploring and working with the subtle dimensions of land and life across Australia, Ireland and elsewhere. This is a presentation by Alana Moore, who is a professional geomancer and dowser, a permaculture pioneer and author. This for our Celebrating the Earth, Earth Day, April 22nd, 2021. Presenting Alana. Part 1. Australia. La Perouse, Sydney. My childhood was spent in Aboriginal land. I got to explore the ancient sites and rock carvings in what is now Botany Bay. It was a world with a normal part of life in the Aboriginal paradigm. Serpent spirits like Chinese dragons were once acknowledged to be everywhere and a force of nature to be reckoned with. Whales pass by this coastline and there are several whale carvings at lookout points on the sandstone cliffs. These were once sites used by Aboriginal people to connect into the whale dreaming, probably to call the whales enclosed so they could be hunted. Recent studies have revealed cosmic connections with some of the Sydney Aboriginal carvings, such as this emu carving. The emu shape in the sky above is visible in the season when the bird lays its eggs, once a favourite food source for people. This small stone circle, just short, just north of Sydney, was once a men's initiation site. The Blue Mountains, west of Sydney, is a powerful Aboriginal dreaming country where I lived a while. It is sacred to Aboriginals from near and far around. The Three Sisters Centre are the best known of the sites there. I spent the 90s in northern New South Wales, a volcanic and very magical area, Mount Warning, Volumbin below shaped the landscape and was the biggest volcanic event in the southern hemisphere some 23 million years ago. As a professional geomancer, I doused some highly energetic spots. Traditionally, it was not a place to linger in, being way too sacred, and so I had to advise people who were finding it difficult to live there. Nimbin Rocks is an old volcanic plug where once the Aboriginal shamans would test their abilities and even jump off the top into a strong updraft of wind to float back down. It was not a good place to live near, locals told me. The Nimbinji spirit was not friendly. Stone arrangements are unusual in northern New South Wales and these two are unique. They were removed because of roadworks and put into the Mullumbimbi Pioneer Park. A pair of yin and yang vortices in shape, no one knows their purpose and the context is lost. Aboriginals in Eastern Australia had their earth temples. They held important ceremonies and initiations on Bora grounds with earth banks around them. Some are preserved or partly. On the northeast coast, 
north coast of New South Wales and can be visited. Dowsing the energies, one finds a geovortex in the centre of each circle, these being linked by a serpent line. Along the path, initiates were once taken and the mysteries revealed to them as described by a few white onlookers. The traditional design of the Bora ground was a large public ring and a small ceremon secret ceremonial ring some distance away. The two rings were linked by a long path. Dreaming tracks, broken lines below, are an equivalent to the ley lines of Europe. These ones mark dream time spirit paths in the Nimbim, North East North South Wales area. They connect sacred sites such as mountain tops and increase sites for hunting magic. Many of these areas are highly energetic and it isn't really suitable for people to live there, but they are a great to visit in a state of respect. Moving to Victoria in 2000, I lived in the third biggest volcanic plain in the world with 500 dorm dormant volcanoes, including Hanging Rock, seen in the classic film Picnic at Hanging Rock. It emphasized its otherworldly quality Aboriginal people are still present there and they work with local authorities to protect sites. Ancient Aboriginal stone arrangements are common while stone carvings are few. Bora grounds are found in the volcanic Sunbury area near Melbourne where the fertile land allowed for large gatherings for ceremony and initiation, with enough wild food available for everyone. People once came from hundreds of kilometres away to attend. Not far away to the north is an ancient stone axe quarry that was still in use in the mid-1800s. Aboriginal stone arrangements are plentiful in Victoria, but are kept somewhat secret, except in old archaeological publications. Many are only recently rediscovered. The stones are usually quite small. The wordy Yuang stone arrangement is the first known to have astronomical connections with solar orientation found by the researchers. Mindy is the most powerful serpent spirit and was much feared, but if you kept within the law, no worries. Several stone arrangements on hillsides depict this being. John Tully took us to view the one he rediscovered, a Bialiba, in central Victoria. At the top is a large boulder that represents the head of Mindy. An Irish dowser friend discovered underground water flowing beneath the stone arrangement 
This wasn't surprising, as serpent spirits are usually associated with water. I've been sharing my dowsing work and discoveries in articles, books and courses on DVDs and CDs since the early 1980s. You can buy them direct from here, www.geomantica.com. Thank you for listening.